Swastiastu, salam sejahtera untuk kita semua, Om Swastiastu, Namo Buddhaya, salam kebajikan dan salam sehat. Very good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and also the participants, the students in international law, class B. This is uh, the special uh, seasons, I mean that the visiting students program. Uh, helped by the Philip C. G. Submut Corps uh, participants for representative the Faculty of Law, Universitas Bengkulu in the Global Round 2021 or next years. So allow me to proceed this season by share screen the videos first, and then I will offer the microphone and also the share screen to Yusuf as the uh, visiting student today. I hope that you can hear the voice and also can enjoy the visual. Okay, uh, very welcome to you all guys, the participants on the brown bag discussions, Philip J.G. support court competitions. Uh, the terminology brown bag means that this is the informal meetings, informal discussions between the speaker, the student visiting, and also the participants, the students from the international law class B. So uh, without, for, without further ado, I will uh, uh, introduce our guest speaker and very warmly humble welcome to Yusuf as one of the participants for the international law mood court competition. Yusuf is the new B-Mooters in international Philip Chagy Submood Court and will be compete in the global round around the 600 universities amongst 90 countries all over the world in this March 2021. So he will represent Faculty of Law, particularly Universitas Bengkulu and also the Indonesia. So he is one of the Indonesian team uh, next year. So today he will uh, proceed or presentation, uh, present the, uh, the materials or the topics regarding the state responsibility under the international law. And also we'll talk a lot or maybe a little bit discussions regarding the mood problem for the international law mood court competitions next year. So without further ado, I I over the microphone and also the share screen for uh, around or, or up, approximately uh, one hour ahead to Yusuf. Uh, Yusuf, please. Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, thank you very much to Pak Ari for this such a great opportunity to be able to have a presentation about state responsibility under international law. Uh, my name is Amy Supakbar. I'm from the class of Faculty of Law, 2019, University of Bengkulu. 
uh, today I will gonna share screen about state responsibility under international law. Let me share my screen. Are you guys can see my share screen? Yes, yeah, sure. We can yes, see your Yes, but not a presentation. Okay. <clears throat> okay, good morning everyone. I hope you are fine and have a good health and good life. Today I will talk about state responsibility under international law. Where I'm not gonna describe all of the material about uh, state responsibility under international law, but some scope I intend to describe to you guys. Where in my table of content, I will tell you about the introduction of state responsibility, the definition of state responsibility, international law regulation regarding to state responsibility, JSAP 2021 case problem and the conclusion from all of this. Uh, introduction. Uh, historically, the term state responsibility referred only to state responsibility for injuries to aliens. It included not only secondary issues such as attribution and remedies, but also the primary rights and duties of states, for example, the asserted international standard of treatment and the right of diplomatic in early, in early efforts by the League of Nations and private bodies to codify the rule of state responsibility. Reflected the traditional focus on responsibility for injuries to aliens, the League, the League 1930s codification conference in The Hague was able to reach an agreement only on secondary issues, such as imputation, not on substantive rule regarding the treatment of aliens and their property. Attempts to codify and develop the rule of state responsibility have continued throughout the life of the United Nations. It took nearly 45 years, more than 30 reports, and extensive work by five special rapporteurs in order for the International Law Commission to reach agreement on the final text of the draft article as a whole. With commentaries, at the same time, the customary international law of state responsibility concerning matters such as detention and physical ill treatment of aliens and their right to a fair trial has been rendered less important than formerly by the development of international human rights law which applies to all standards whether aliens or national the concept of general regime of legal responsibility which the rule of state responsibility have taken on is an inception of the civil law system and is largely foreign to the common law tradition and the question is what is state responsibility According to Markham Shaw, state responsibility is one of the fundamental principles of international law. It arises out of the international legal system and the principle of state sovereignty and equality of states. It implies that if a state commits an internationally wrongful or unlawful act against another state, it will be internationally responsible for reparation. Uh, for example, like this, if Indonesia create a policy and that policy uh, straight or not, uh, bring an impact to other state, whether it is uh, economic losses or even civilian losses, then Indonesia can be account to responsible for state's responsibility from other states, such as if Australia feel that from the policy of Indonesia, uh, they have been an economic losses, then the, uh, Australia can have a right to file a suit against Indonesia for state responsibility, such as for a compensation. Uh, the definition of responsibility. The word responsibility, what is it? A responsibility is action taken by one state regularly result in injury to or outrage on the dignity or prestige of another state. Also, responsibility is the necessary corollary of obligation where states are primary subject of international law. Responsibility is concerned with the incident and consequences of illegal acts and the payment of compensation for lost costs. Every breach by a subject of international law of its obligation entail its international responsibility. We know that subject of international law, for example, such as states, uh, international organization, where in the advisory opinion of Prince Bernard case is the born of why international organization can be subject of international law, where it states that 
uh, international organization is a subject of international person and it has capacity to possessing international right and claim and capable of, of maintaining its right by bringing international claim. International organization can also be taken account to responsibility or such and more is like individual. Individual is the subject of internal, international uh, subject, international law. So a person can be also taking account for responsibility and many other subject of international law. <clears throat> and next is what is the law regulation regarding to state responsibility? To ask state for responsible, Article 2 of International Law Commission, Articles on State Responsibility or ILCASR, put two requirements. First, the wrongful conduct in question must be attributable to the state. State cannot act its own because state is not a living thing. State is uh, uh, compris comprises of organs. That organs that create state can be have a function. State organs shall represent the state in any matters. Article 4 ILCSR provides that the conduct of any state, I'm sorry, the conduct of any state organ shall be considered an act of that state under international law, whether the organ exercises legislative, executive, or judicial, judiciary function. An organ include any person or entity. So if the if an action comes from the organ of government such as legislative, executive, or judiciary can be taken account for responsibility if they're indicating doing an international wrongfully act. Conduct in article means action or, em or emission. For example, in the Corfu Channel case in 1949, where ICG held that Albanian was responsible because it knew or must have known of the presence of the mines in its territorial waters and did nothing to warn the state of their presence. We know that in the Corfu Channel case where the Albanian versus United Kingdom, where United Kingdom have a losses to ship of the Royal Navy because they have struck by mines from Albanian. The ICG at that time ruled that Albanian was responsible for the mines that was that they put in their territorial sea. Because of this, uh, Albanian responsible for the compensation to United Kingdom. We, we can see from this example that if state conduct an internationally wrongful act, they can be taking account for responsibility. A, wrongful conduct judiciary attributable to the state. Like I say before, in the Article 4, where it states that executive, judiciary, and legislative can be taken account to responsibility. In this case, in the judicial organ can be the cause of state responsibility because of justice denial. In the Jens claim case, Mexico failed to arrest and punish an offender which caused death to an American citizen. ICG held that this is a justice denial and Mexico should be liable. So every action from whether it's that executive, legislative, or even judiciary, and if indicated in this case in the judicial organ, they, Mexico failed to arrest and punish an offender. Mexico failed to protect their citizen or even another citizen. In this case, is American citizen caused a death to American citizen because the failed action from judicial organ of Mexico uh, for, um, for that, ICG held that this is a justice denial and Mexico should be liable. B, uh, wrongful conduct of the executive attributable to the state, example, conduct of police, army, government officer. In the Macy claim case, a US citizen who has working in Mexico was killed. Mexican authority failed to punish the offender. Mexico is liable and should pay damages to US. Similarly, like the case I mentioned before. The question is, does the state be responsible if wrongful conduct committed by its organ when off duty? As the case I mentioned above uh, before, uh, the case before I mentioned is when an uh, uh, organ still on duty, but we may be question is, if a uh, state doing that action in off duty, can be they can, uh, can the state 
taking account to be responsible? Well, the answer is no. Why? Because a state will only be attributable to such wrongful conduct when it is committed on duty. If committed off duty, it cannot be attributable to the state. Example in my own case, a consul has been attacked by American police officers two times, where the first attack was when he was off duty. Second attack, he saw his badge to assert his official capacity and because of this, U.S. was responsible not for the first attack, but for the second attack. So uh, what, it mean, what it is mean by this case is that, for example, when a police officer, he, uh, he did, at that time, he did not wear their uniform. So he just wear a civilian uniform. Uh, we must be assumed that uh, he is not a police officer because he were a civilian officer. So if that police officer created international wrongfully act, the state must not responsible for the action. It is their own responsibility. But when that police officer saw his badge and saw his authority, that is, he is the representative of a state, then that police officer can be taken account for responsibility and state can be taken account to responsibility. Two. The conduct must constitute a breach of an international legal obligation, Article 12. A state is in breach of its obligation when any act of the state does not conform to its obligation. Uh, the meaning of this that is when a state have a binding of international, obli international uh, obligation and when that state is violated or not obey that obligation and a uh, state can be taken account to responsibility. A state may also be liable for de facto state organ. For example, public corporation or private company performing element of governmental authority. What is what it is mean by this is like, as we know in Indonesia, a state our state own a state run own facility like BUMN or BUMD. Badan Usaha Milik Negara or Badan Usaha Milik Daerah is the representative of the private company performing element of governmental authority. So every action cre uh, created from the BUMN or BUMND can also be taken account for uh, state responsibility. Uh, next, I'm going to discuss about the conduct of private person may be attributable to state in two circumstances if in article 8 it was carried out on instruction of the state it was under direction or control of state so we as an individual person can also be taken account for responsibility if there is an uh, emblem of we are supported by state or we have under direction or control of state or even we have under instruction of the state but what is the degree of control that state needs to exercise over the person there are two views According to Nicaragua versus United States of America case, state needs to exercise effective control. In this Nicaragua versus United States of America case, is the case where America, United States of America indicating having an intervention or support a belligerent organization in Nicaragua that wants to overthrow a government. Uh, the name of that belligerent organization is Contrast where America by their CIA, Central Intelligence Agency, support finance the organization, the person of contrast, support a weapon. Uh, the Nicaragua find that this is kind of the intervention of their state affairs. The ICG then held that state that US, United States of America is wrong for, for that kind of action, where the control by state is effective when, for example, state finance the persons, state coordinate the conduct of such person, and state issues specific instruction to such person. If there are three indicate, then maybe that private person can be responsible. Uh, second, in the case according to prosecution fee tadic, state only to exercise overall control state does not necessarily need issue instruction concerning its specific action so there is no distinction in it state have all responsibility for the action that was committed by their own citizen and now uh, what is our jsup 2021 case problem uh, uh, our jsup 2021 case problem is 
the dispute, international dispute between the United Republic of Abrebuya against democratic state of Ramastayo, where the United Republic of Abrebuya is a developed country with the majority of their PDB is in uh, is in manufacturing sector and while the democratic state of Ramastayo is uh, in banking and financial service. So this both country is a developed country, is a rich country. Uh, the problem start because of the emergence of unknown strain of virus which called COVID-18. So this is this virus is easy to contagious to people, and because of this, WHO declared that the virus as pandemic. Both countries, whether Apropuya or Anomstayo, assign their scientists to develop a vaccine. This is where the problem will come in. Uh, Ranav Stayo implementing entry restriction to isolate the country from others. This policy having impact to economic loss to Apriya, especially in tourism sector. And Apriya asked for compensation to Ranav Stayo over the entry regulation policy. We we may be see that in this case, Ranav Stayo can be taken on for state responsibility. Next, Ranav Stayo is give an asylum to one of citizen of Apriya, Miss Kembra Forman who is a research scientist at Apropulia State Own Laboratory for developing vaccine, where she is disclose her work relating information to public, which is forbidden. And therefore, Ms. Perman is the criminal offense validity from the authority of Apropulia. Ms. Perman is a whistleblower of their own state. She is uh, tweeted a Twitter about their line of work that she was under non-disclosure agreement not to disclose her line of work. What 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 is she do in her line of work? Because of this, she is a criminal offenses of the authority of Repluya. But Miss Ferman is fa uh, finally able to manage to get away from Repluya, and Miss Ferman is running to consulate of Ranov Stayo. This is where the international a dispute comes in where uh, Apriya thinks that Ranov Stayo violated their international law. Uh, next of the case of problem is Apriya. After that, accepting Miss Forman, Miss Forman uh, finally want to go to Ranov Stayo to to run away from the Apriya because Miss Forman is have already gave an asylum seeker. He is accepted for applica for asylum seeker, so she is have a right to protect under the country of Ranav Stayo, where she is actually a Apriya citizen. But in that time, accidental, incidentally, Apriya shooting down a civilian aircraft. And it turns out that one of the passengers is Ms. Forman, that asylum seeker. Uh, because of this, Ranav Stayo filed an international lawsuit to Apriya. And but uh, both country agreed to institute proceeding to international court of justice. Uh, and this is the summary of pleading of both Apriya and Ranov Stayo, where we're gonna see where is the state responsibility comes in. And Apriya, in the point A of the pleading. Ranov Stayo violated international law by applying its entry regulation to Apropulia and is thus obligated to compensate it for the resulting economic losses. Duly, as I say before, that when a state create a policy and that policy create an impact in other state or even economic losses or civil losses, then that state can be taken account for state responsibility. In this case, Ranov Stayo may be able to take responsibility if that indicated that uh, Ranov Stayo action is indeed violated international law. Then based on Article 2 of ILCSR, uh, Ranov Stayo can also be liable for responsibility. Uh, we're going to also see in the uh, Ranov Stayo side where is the state responsibility comes in. I'm going to highlight in the D point where the Apropulia violated international law by shooting down the aircraft. We know, like I said before, that Apropulia is incidentally shooting down the uh, civilian aircraft, which more, which 
which the passenger is Miss Furman. So, Apriplia, if Ranostayo have a strong evidence indicated that Apriplia violated international law, then Apriplia can also be taken in account for state vulnerability, especially in economic losses or even uh, material moral losses to have compensation, reparation, and etc. Appropriate have obligation to do that if indicated appropriate is guilty for shooting down uh, civilian air, that civilian aircraft. Uh, the conclusion of this discussion is if a state commits an internationally wrongful or unlawful act against another state, it will be internationally responsible for reparation. The International Law Commission article on state responsibility or ILCSR are the nearest we have to a comprehensive coherent set of rules. Much of the content reflects the custom. The, the rules on individual responsibility complement the rules on state responsibility but are much more limited in scope and ambit. Objective and subjective elements are essential for individual responsibility, the former primarily only for state responsibility. Uh, thank you for you guys' time. If anybody have a question, I feel free to ask and I will try to answer it. If anybody have a question, feel free to ask. Okay, thank you so much for the fruitful discussions and fruitful presentations made by Yusuf. I think this is the second season or chapters. We go to the Q&A, question and answer session. So if you have the questions regarding the international state responsibility under the international law, you can ask the questions by saying or turn on your mic microphone or a, uh, a chat box uh, account or picture under the uh, under the uh, under the screen itself okay uh, any questions from the participants uh, the questions could be uh, delivered by using bahasa you can ask uh, use by using bahasa and also by using english both of them is okay ada yang mau bertanya enggak? Boleh pakai bahasa Indonesia dan juga boleh pakai bahasa Inggris. Excuse me, sir. Okay, ah, uh, you would like to ask questions, please. Okay, thank you for Mr. Yusuf for the presentation. Uh, before I give your the question, may uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Akila Putri Andani. And then uh, the question is, according to you personal, personally, which country is the most correct about a Prefluya and Renostayo? About your personally, can you give me? Uh, can you give? Can you give? How do you confuse us? Thank you, Mr. Yusuf. Okay. Uh, okay. Another questions maybe from the other participants. It is okay just to practice your English. Don't be uh, afraid or don't worry if you did some mistake uh, in English. It's okay. Ada lagi nggak yang mau bertanya? No one? Uh, maybe with the questions of Aikila, I would like to ask you the question also. Uh, as we know that there is a case, uh, the yeah. Kasogi kill in the consulate of Arab Saudi, right? Uh, and then uh, prejudice that the involvement of the Prince Salman, the son, the, uh, the son king of Arab Saudi in this case. How you see these uh, issues uh, under the international law and does it is only the domestic issues or could be used the inter, uh, international state responsi responsibility mm -hmm. principle in these issues? Okay. Maybe you can ask the two questions first and then we go to the next uh, season. Okay. Uh, uh, I will answer the first question, Bang, if I may. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, in the question of Akila, he, she asked is where site I will choose to think that where is the correct one? I think we, we cannot assume that 
one one side is win, other side is win. No, I think we cannot see. Uh, we cannot see that because Apriya also have right to defend himself. Apriya not truly wrong of what he did because there is a force major in the case of Apriya where he is shooting down a civilian aircraft, which they don't know that in that aircraft contain Miss Forman. There is no indication of Apriya trying to kill Miss Forman because they are running away from their uh, 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 authority. Uh, also in the Ranostayo side, Ranostayo also have the right to have their entry regulation to, to protect themselves from the danger of the J-18 viruses because Ranostayo have also state sovereignty to, in, to deploy their regulation. Uh, also Ranostayo can also be right when they say that Apriya violated international law when Apriya shooting down civilian aircraft because because under Article Three Bis A of Internet Chicago Convention where it regulates about uh, civilian aircraft protection in the Article Three Bis A it states that <coughs> uh, the the state must refrain from the use of force against civilian aircraft. We must assume that in the Chicago Convention, the Chicago Convention is highly protect the civilian aircraft from the use of force. If the runoff style side can be proved that appropriate action for shooting down Ms. Forman is indeed by the national, then appropriate must be responsible. But if not, then not must be responsible. So we cannot say that which side is better, which side is one. I think we must assume that this will prove in the uh, competition later. I think I can answer that. Just like that, Kila. Or can, or you can understand? You can and you understand? respond or comment, Akila, for the uh, for the answers. No, is it enough? Akila, uh, do you have any response? For the for the answering, or is it enough? Um, okay, Mr. Yusuf. So you believe that uh, the more truth about this case is uh, a prefluya, right? Uh, well, we 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 I I am say that we must not assume see it in one side. We we must see it in both sides. Okay. Thank you for the. The about the answer my question, okay. I can understand. I can, I can understand about the answer. Thank you. Uh, to Pa Ari, uh, can you repeat the question? Uh, I just wondering about your perspective to see the case about the Kasogi killed in the council of Arab Saudi it, under the uh, under the state responsibility process. Uh, principles because we know that uh, some uh, uh, news uh, say that the involvement of the prince could be the Arab Saudi. Uh, Saudi yeah. Oh, uh, in this uh, Jamal Khashoggi case, where their indication of intervention from the Saudi Arabia, where if I'm not correct, the Jamal Khashoggi is under Turkey embassy. Is that right, Bang? Oh, no, no. It is in Arab, um, Arab consulate. He Arab killed consulate. in Arab consulate. Uh, in Saudi There's consulate. There's of assassination to Jamal Khashoggi, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh. I think if... Uh, if a uh, state on which Jamal Khashoggi uh, taking protection can see that he he indicating there is a assassination, then I think with a hard evidence and bring to the ICG, the murder of Jamal Khashoggi 
can be taken, taking account to responsible, which indicate that Prince Salman maybe can be responsible if there a solid evidence to when if this case can uh, bring to dispute to ICG can I think can be responsible to those who committed the that crime. Okay, all right. Another questions maybe from another Hello, Mr. Yusuf. Okay. Mr. Yusuf, can you hear me? Yes, Farhan, yes. do you have any questions? No? Uh, okay, Yusuf. Yeah, uh, do you know about Sipadan and Ligitan Island? Yes, yes. About the island, we know the Indonesian and Malaysia have uh, the problem about the island, okay? You know about the problem. So, yes. what do you think about the case in Ligitan and Sipada, uh, Sipadan and Ligitan Island? What do you think about the case? And what do you think about the jurisdiction? Which one of the truth about the island? And uh, can you give me about your uh, can you give the explanation why do you wish one of the one of the both uh, one of the truth about island spadan or ligitan okay thank okay thank you for the question akila i will try to answer i think in this libat uh, sibadan ligitan case where the case between indonesia and malaysia where malaysia claimed the island of sibadan and ligitan I think I support the claim from Malaysia. Why? Because according to history, Sipadan and Ligitan never, even if from the UNCLOS, where the territorial zone, finally that apa, Sipadan and Ligitan become our territory. But in the practice, Sipadan and Ligitan Island never in our uh, preservation. Indonesia have no put any administration to the Sipa dan Ligitan because in the international law, there uh, the principle of occupation, where if uh, where if there is a, some island or some territory which no one a claim of, and that that uh, that territory can be a claim from state if there act, there a sign of administrative action. What it is mean by administrative action is like uh, there is a sign of life in that island. There is sign of preservation to that island. There is sign of even bill of rights in, uh, I'm sorry, there is sign of act in that uh, island. Uh, in the Sipadan Ligitan case, Malaysia in the, I believe in the 1920, have already preserved the Sipadan Ligitan. Malaysia even proved that in the Sipa dan Ligitan case, Malaysia have already built a mercusuar in that Sipa dan Ligitan case. Indonesia never touched that island. Uh, because of that, ICG think that there is no sign of uh, want to preserve that island from Indonesia. Then ICG ruling that in the Sipa dan Ligitan case, Malaysia have right to claim the island of Sipa dan Ligitan. Uh, from this case, let let be example to us because Indonesia is a rich country. Indonesia have a many island, and that island must we keep or preserve from the threat of other nation. Because why? Other state is I think want to how they 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 want to effort to maybe to take the benefit of resources of Indonesia. So we as a the next generation, I think, must be aware of our state richness. I think this 
because of this Sipa dan Ligitan case can be example for us when we neglect about our resources. Okay, thank you. Uh, I know that the more the truth about this case is uh, ICG make uh, Malaysia is win. That's because Malaysia taking action, taking a administration to build some so Mercusuar and something like that. So me too, I think that Malaysia is more can win with this case. Thank you for your explanation. Thank, yes. thank you for your showing the truth. Yes, Paris. thank you Akila. For okay, another uh, participant maybe would like to uh, if no, maybe we go to the last uh, questions made by me also. Uh, I just wanted to drop you national step responsibility. First, uh, Singapore, and then Malaysia and Indonesia, where the Singapore produce the nuclear weapon, and then they sell to the Malaysia, then Malaysia shooting the nuclear weapon to the Indonesia. A bill for the state responsibility for the international wrongful act because he just already sell only, but they don't use to shooting the Indonesia, the Shutia to the Indonesia. How the international will see this issue? Thank you. I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Pa. Uh, when you ask that question, the can clear, can, can clear because the connection, I think. Can you repeat uh, the question? Okay, uh, I tried to drive you to the fair, uh, to the victim case between the Singapore, Malaysia, and Indonesia, where Singapore produced the nuclear weapons then they sell to the Malaysia and Malaysia use that to shooting the Indonesia. How the international law see this issue under the principle of state responsibility? I mean, can the Singapore could be sure because he produced the nuclear weapon, but he don't use that to shooting Indonesia. He just already sell. He just sell the, the nuclear weapon to Malaysia. The shooting uh, state is Malaysia. So how okay. the international see this issue? Okay, okay. Uh, international law see this issue uh, in this case where Singapore make a nuclear weapon, then Singapore sell to Malaysia and Malaysia used to Indonesia that nuclear weapon. I think because, uh, you know, we can must assume the good faith of uh, selling weapon to uh, Singapore because Singapore sell that weapon without knowing how Malaysia using it. I think there is a sign of moving uh, responsibility from Singapore to Malaysia, where where the uh, where the Singapore sell that weapon, uh, nuclear weapon to Malaysia. Then that there is sign of responsibility moving. So Malaysia is fully responsible for what they did for that weapon. So when uh, Malaysia used that weapons to Indonesia, then Malaysia is must be responsible. I think that's it. Okay. Uh, uh, maybe we go to the last uh, session. This is the final word or the final conclusion made by you. And then we close the session. Okay, so please your conclusion. Conclusion. <clears throat> okay, uh, my conclusion from this discussion is, if a state commits an internationally wrongful or unlawful act against another state, it will be internationally responsible for reparation. The International Law Commission, Article on State Responsibility, or ILCSR, are the nearest we have to a comprehensive current set of rules. Much of the content reflects the custom. The rule on individual responsibility complement the rules on state responsibility, but are much more limited in scope and ambit. 
Objective and subjective elements are essential for individual responsibility. The former primary only for state responsibility. Uh, let me state again that ILCSR, I think, are the nearest comprehensive current set of rules regarding regulating about state responsibility. So if we want to see how state responsibility is really is, I think there are regulations from the ILCSR can uh, telling us about what is responsibility, state responsibility, uh, what kind of responsibility can be taken accountable based on the, we can see in the ILCSR. I think that's it for me, Bang. Okay, uh, thank you so much. And thank you so much for the participant, for the kindly participate in this uh, season. Uh, we're very happy for having you, Pak Yusuf, and also the participant. Uh, this is the last uh, class for the brown bag discussion for the class B. You can also join another season in the another international law class if you wanna, or you if you interested or intended to learn about the international law by using English. So maybe you can join in the H uh, H class and also in the. Uh, I don't know about the series or number, but in the class Bu Aska also. And also we have the program in this uh, afternoon in the three o'clock, in the 3 p.m. in the book Sonia class. Uh, it, will, it will discuss regarding the issue of state sovereignty. So if you're interested to learn about the state sovereignty under the international law by using English and provided by the Philip Chegi Submuter or participant from Faculty of Law, just, for, just feel free to join in these uh, occasions. Okay. Uh, I think that's all. Thank you so much for your participation. Thank you so much for Yusuf and wish me luck. Uh, saya mau minta doanya. Semoga kita bisa being top 100, jadi 100 uh, best law school in the world. Karena ada 600 yang ikut, kita realistis kita ingin ada di 100 besar sekolah hukum terbaik. Between Harvard, Yale, uh, Oxford, and so on and so forth. I think thank you so much and see you. Bye-bye. Makasih semuanya. Oke, okay. uh, Yusuf boleh di set recordnya nanti dikasih ke Bang Adrian.